Howdy folks, I'm working on a piece of Georgetown this morning and this has all been with uh, direct percussion, this white tail billet here. Um, but what I'm doing now, I'm working on this punch, I got it shaved down a little bit, this is a new one. Um, the other half of this antler is in my issue stick, so I figured I'd keep this piece and um, what I want to do here is go ahead and punch in some notches. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of punch notching technique. I'll show you a couple other tools while I got some things out. This is pretty much, you know, my usual practical napping kit. This is my oldest billet. I actually found a, a shed and this was one piece I got off of it. I, you know, used up the other parts for making knife handles and such, but uh, this was my first flint napping billet and it's lasted a long time. I love this little guy. It's, it's very light, but you just got to have decent accuracy. And here's another punch that I'm going to use for, for notching. This is a little sliver of uh, buffalo rib or bison rib. Here's another little one that's pretty worn out. Hit my fingers a lot. Uh, here's another just white tail tine, little brow tine. Oops. Another guy there. That one's chipped out. Need to touch some of these up. Uh, here's another one of those. Oh wait, no, that was the same one. A couple slivers of buffalo rib. You can almost just use these in your hand for real fine work, making bird points and stuff. It's great material. And then uh, this is another pressure flaking notching tool. A lot of you curious about how I do just my regular notching. This is what I'm using. All right, so oh, I'm also going to need scrunching stone okay sorry I'm still I should have had all this set up so tool maintenance is really important and I've found that pretty much want just like a nice rounded bevel and you don't want it to come down to too sharp of a point because you really just want that shoulder to catch if, if this be your platform edge here it's a good example actually you want to roll that edge up and actually be punching mostly straight down I mean you give it a little bit of inward tilt but I'm gonna just start creeping in And what I first do is I scrunch it. Just to get kind of like your abraded edge going. But what this does is as it's breaking off these little flakes, it's not dulling the edge. There's still there's still bite. If you look, my antler is actually still gonna grip on that sharp little spot there. Let me do a little more trimming here. All right, once you feel it's got some catch, this is a Ipe, piece of Ipe wood, spelled I-P-E. It's a South American hardwood, very dense. There's one.
So just like normal notching, um, you're rolling this center line back and forth. Okay, you always want to pay very close attention to the thickness of your piece because unlike with normal flint napping, that you, you don't have a lot of exit, exit strategy. I mean, you kind of just get one area, and if that area crushes and you lose your platform, or I'm sorry, you lose, you know, kind of your sharp edge, it's just not going to go. That was a nice one that crept up in. I think I'm gonna try switching to a finer punch now. Let's try some of this buffalo rib here. Now that I've got an entry. And got the base kind of thinned down as much as I could. I've got one spot here, so that might give me problems later, but nice. I haven't done one of these in a while. We'll see how far I can take it for you. getting somewhere. You'll notice I do, I do a lot of trimming just with this pressure work right here and this is like 99% of flint napping is these just fine little delicate moves and isolating and I am actually isolating. I'll come in here and I'll hit the right side and the left side of my notch and what that does is I don't know if you can see that right here but almost like an e-notch I've got a little W shape going in the bottom of my notch, and that's where I'm going to set my punch and go. Kind of like fluting. I make like a little fluting nipple on the inside of my notch and then whap it. If there's one thing I can't stress enough when you're notching, I mean any, anybody notching, even with copper knows this, but especially with antler. Maintenance, maintenance, maintenance on your tool. Ah, that kind of crushed around weird right there. Hope I can. Yeah. Boy, I hope I can salvage that. I might have just stalled the shade out of this.
get around this guy. I might have to widen it a bit, but we'll get her. There we go. Coming around the corner. Ooh, I see a little, see a little crack starting. This might be the end of it. I don't know if that's just a vein in the stone. Watch. That worked. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta get in there with the old pressure flaker and tame it up a little bit.
Got a real booger spot in there that I need to get out. Doing a little trimming here on the base. Got my notches where I want them. Pretty ugly, but you get the point. Little calf Creek. Next part of the video, I'll show you all. Hopefully. <laughs> how to finish the blade after you've got the the base first
Thanks for watching.